Biomutant Analysis and What Made It Great. Hey, my name's George and welcome to Gaming My Whole Life where we discuss everything video game related. Now today's video is not actually a review of Biomutant. You can go anywhere for that and you can form your own opinions. This space that I'm going to exclusively make is for those of you who already love the game, who are already interested in the game, maybe you need an extra push, or maybe you're someone who's put a gazillion hours into it and you just want to hear another YouTuber talk about how that game that you love he or she loves it as well, we're going to talk about the little itty bitty details. Because the thing with reviews is you get a general look at everything. You never deep dive, you never delve into it, right? You get a really quick overview of the graphics, gameplay, sound, you know, replay value, this, this and that. And that's cool, it serves its purpose, it gives you a big flashy number at the end of the uh, video to let you know, hey, is this a 10 out of 10 or a 1 out of 10, avoid like the plague. I get it. But this video, which may become a series going forward if this goes well, let's talk about the smexy things, the nerdy things that people who have played the game know and love about it. And also it will give me the opportunity to talk about things that just reviewers don't have time to put into their videos because they're too busy reviewing the game. So let's get into it, right? Also, it's a good timing because I've had this game at the back of my mind and just recently I believe the Nintendo Switch version of Biomutant has come out and people are re-talking about it again. So what a good opportunity. So let's firstly talk about graphics. Graphics, graphics, graphics. Baby, Biomutant is absolutely gorgeous. The art direction, the artistic vision behind it, the amount of vibrant colors that this game is hitting you with from start to finish is truly beautiful. The photo mode, I'll be legit with you all. The photo mode, I think I have spent half of my game time maybe more just in photo mode because when you play this game and you pause it and you rotate the camera you take in all the lighting effects has all the modern effects the texture quality is really high and there is a insane amount of detail when you zoom in into the biomutants that are around you get so close that you can see the individual fur on the when you go all the way in which is another thing which i really appreciate which you may have not heard in other reviews because again this is not a review is when you're in camera mode photo mode when you zoom in you know in video games normally when you zoom in you reach a certain point where all of a sudden the object you're zooming into disappears right or becomes super transparent Biomutant doesn't seem to believe in that if you want to zoom all the way into the eyeball or you have a gun and you want to zoom all the way into the hole that's in the front of the gun, I don't know what you call it. If you want to go all the way in there and look at the inside texture for no reason, you can do that and that's actually quite impressive because it really lets you get into the world. What also helps with the visuals, and we'll go through this by category, but again this is for the fanboys, this is for the fangirls, this is for just people who just really like this game, is the Depth of field is so aggressive in this game, and I love it. I'm a sucker for depth of field. I love it when a character or object is in focus, and then you get all the blurriness behind it. It looks crisp, it looks awesome, and in photo mode, when you're focusing and you have that gorgeous, gorgeous depth of field going on, with the, with the sunset and the texture quality and the vibrant colors and everything, so, so good good also this game even though it's so gorgeous and so beautiful it is also the monster designs quite terrifying that exact same game at night time when you're fighting these monsters and they have these glowing eyes and they just look like something out of a scream movie the way lighting works at night time as well when everything is pitch black and you are fighting and you are using fire spells and abilities and muzzle shots and we'll talk more about that in the gameplay section of this video but when you're fighting at night time and things are glowing and sparking then everything illuminates everything else putting it together as a whole picture it just really is one of those rare cases where extra graphics do actually make the game better although it's no secret here at game my whole life i am a sucker for good graphics because i think it plays a really big part of course, we have the cliche argument, gameplay is more important than graphics, yes, but that doesn't mean that graphics suddenly isn't important. It's very important, it immerses you in the world, especially considering that Biomutant is an open world sort of game. And then it makes sense that if you're spending the vast majority of your time walking up mountains, 
and just going from one location to another and continuously exploring, it makes sense that you want the blades of grass to look the best it can. You want the water to look the best it can. You want the sun glare to look the best it can, best it can, best it can. And speaking of best it can, like no hate towards the Switch owners, but I just want to give you a heads up. If you're playing Biomutant on the Switch and you're like, I really like this game. Um, it doesn't look that that good, but art direction wise, it's wonderful. And you're wondering how much of a difference is the uh, like PC version or PS5 version or whatever. I will, of course, show you screenshots, any screenshots that I've taken the photo mode myself while playing. And it isn't a slight different visually between the Switch version and like the high end PC version. There is a mammoth difference, a behemoth of a difference um, between the Switch and what you can get on the, on the top end. If that sort of thing is important to you, just want you to know, yeah, it's a big difference. The world itself, talking about feel, focusing on food, that's what I mean by this is going to be this different sort of video, is I want to be able to talk about the smaller details you normally don't have time to talk about. I love the world, I love the pacing, I love the fact that even if you're talking to a bad guy, Everyone talks calmly. You have this wonderful music that is with you throughout the whole time. You have a narrator who's always telling you what's going on, who you would think would be annoying, but actually if you accept them, uh, they're really good. I really enjoy them. But even when you're talking to enemies, even if something really big, really dramatic is happening, everyone still talks to you really calmly. And I don't know what it is, but the consistency of everyone, whether they are friend, foe, calm moment, erratic moment the fact that regardless everyone talks to you calmly helps like maintain your emotion your emotions or something i think that's the best way to put it it's just done really well but moving past the graphics let's talk gameplay these developers were extremely ambitious because you have devil may cry like gameplay with melee with guns with psychic abilities with mutant abilities with martial arts you have a lot of choice and it's up to you which area you focus in whether you want to focus a little bit on everything or if you want to become an absolute expert the game really opens itself up that open world has a reputation of you can go in any direction you want and i feel the gameplay lets you also go in any direction you want so if you want to become a gun buff, you want to be blasting everything, everyone away with laser beam, machine guns, shotguns, rocket launchers, you, you want to create an acid spitting thing, you, you want to go abnormal, you can do that. You want to focus on melee, you want to run around with your massive sword, your massive hammer, you want to make things drop within a single hit, you can do that. You want to focus on psychic abilities, you want to levitate for no reason and do really weird abilities and zap and fireballs and this and that, you can do it. If you want to focus on mutant abilities as well, you can do that as well. And points for creativity with the mutant abilities, if you want to make, and I know this sounds gross, but if you want to make a snot bubble, you can encapsulate yourself in a massive bubble go around the environment picking up enemies as you roll bouncing you can make mushrooms sprout under the ground and if you sprout it under an enemy it acts like a trampoline and boing they spring away this is a lot of creativity there say you want to throw everything out the window and you want to focus on different martial arts skills and, and um expertise you can do that and what's amazing here is you have all of these different options to help you fight in this third person um, open world game. And it's up to you how much, which area you focus in. And it's just done really well. Normally when a developer tries to do a little bit of everything, they please no one. But they famously took their time with this game as is in part of the actual trailer, which I've been having running in the background most likely while I've been talking, is it said, when is it coming out? When we feel it's ready. They were very proud of the fact of, no, no, this is going to be our baby. You are going to get this when we're ready. You know, something uh, the Cyberpunk 2077 developers, and frankly, almost every single AAA developer at the moment would learn from. So a lot of, a lot of respect from that. Now, moving, so with the game when you play it, what is another very awesome point of difference is nothing goes to waste and again it circles back to the open world nature so what do we do when you play an open world game you're running around sure you you're beating up enemies and this and that but you're also picking up a lot of items in open worlds there's a lot of trash items there's a lot of things you get for no reason you learn to ignore them or you learn to sell them in biomutant what i think they did exceptionally well 
is at first everything does feel a little bit overwhelming there's just so many options so much customization ignoring the fact that i forgot to mention at the start of the video is of course the fact that it's called bio mutant because when you start the game you can ch you character customize your mutant it changes how they look you can change their fur color you can choose which area you want to specialize in and that affects their physical proportions so for example if your bio mutant is someone who focuses on melee they're going to be big and buff and like broad shoulders like me for example or if you want them to be psychic they'll be smaller and they just it adjusts while you go about it but going back to nothing goes to waste and i think this is a fantastic selling point is in bio mutant apart from all the customization options we've already discussed you can also customize all of your equipment all of your clothing and all of your weapons now a big theme think captain planet for um for bio mutant by the way if you even know what i just said hit subscribe i did love that um captain planet show but nothing goes to waste so as you go around you pick up all this old gear items clothing mechanical non-mechanical pick up all these things and with time you slowly learn that every single item no matter what it is has its value because you can either sell every single item and then buy yourself some pre-made weapons or armor or you can actually enhance every single piece of armor you have by multiple bits so imagine in my uh chest here right say this was an item in bio mutant you'd actually be able to upgrade this shoulder this sh shoulder the chest bit at the sides at the back as you rotate the camera so you have all these different areas that you can put enhancing abilities enhancing effects um enhanced features you just want to buff it up whatever you want to do you can customize every single part and that also goes for weapons so if you want your random sword your random gun you want that to light on fire. You want that to shoot or slash acid. You want it to have a weird side effect where you hit them and there's a spring effect. So you hit them with your weak weapon, but it sends the enemies flying. So they're going to fall down a hole. There is so much choice there. And while overwhelming and seemingly irrelevant at first, once you realize and get comfortable with how to use all that, I think it goes really well because then you are encouraged with the open world design to continuously explore the, as I've already elaborated on quite a bit, the gorgeous world just looks fantastic. While you're exploring this beautiful world and you're picking up all these items, no item goes to waste because you're either going to sell it or you're going to use it to enhance your weapon. And when you enhance your weapons, there's a lot of parts as well. It goes beyond simply, I have a level two handgun thing and then I can make it level three and does slightly more damage. We're talking much, much, much greater in depth here. For say you have some sort of gun, there'll be four to five different parts to it. You'll have the actual handle, you have the actual nuzzle, you have the reload caliber, you'll have the actual weapon, you have all different things. And so as you're exploring, as you're perving on the graphics, as you're living in photo mode, um, as I did, and just taking in everything all the time and continuously being wowed, you're also continuously upgrading every single piece of armor that you have or buying the best version of it. Where, again, you spend a lot of time selling, recycling, reusing. And when you combine the fact that everything is recycled so not a single item goes to waste, you combine the fact that all the gameplay, there's like five, six different combat options for you to specialize in and you combine the fact that the world is so gorgeous all of it continuously goes in a little bit of a repeated cycle where the gameplay loop is forever satisfied as you get better and better and speaking more of gameplay one thing that the game does really well is it slowly opens up its world more and more to you so then it never actually gets boring see at first you'll be on your feet and then you later get a hang glider then later get something that will let you go into the waters and then you'll get better with your knowledge of radio uh radio action man <laughs> i'm thinking of the Simpsons. you know radioactive places where if you go there because that's why it's called bio mutant just imagine a lot of radiation everywhere where it doesn't belong it's affected the um population it's why humans are gone it's why the animals have taken over blah 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 but what's really cool is you literally have areas of the map that you can't go to or you can only go to for a very limited amount of time because the atmosphere, the environment is too dangerous for you. And so you would then upgrade your clothing equipment uh, so then you can be able to walk into areas that you couldn't walk before. And you'll have other areas where you can't go into the water, but then you will get like a little submarine thing, which is adorable, which will let you travel the waters and then you'll be able to access the air. You'll be able to get yourself a ride like, like a horse sort of thing but it's it's not it's a very interesting biomutant and 
it just continuously opens up more and more and more and more and more. And when you think the game surely doesn't have anything to offer, then that's exactly what it does. It keeps offering more and more and more. And also, all the gameplay aspects I mentioned, it does it well. It does it well. Now, I don't have a super PC. I have a, I have a powerful PC. It's like, I don't know, 16 gig of RAM, which is pretty standard these days, but a nice amount. I have an RTX card. I have the cheapest one. I got the 2060 because I couldn't, couldn't afford any better. And I have some quad core processor thing or whatever. Um, that said, I play Biomutant at its highest settings. It looks fantastic. I don't experience frame rate issues or anything like that. So there'll be a lot of you watching this video who actually have a much better computer than me, or maybe some of you don't have as good a computer than me. Cool. instead of maxing the graphics, you put it down ever so slightly. So what I'm saying is the the build of Biomutant as of this date, it's very nice. It runs really well. What I also really like about Biomutant is you can just get lost in its world so much. That's what I really enjoy doing. I really like walking around and again deliberately creating scenarios where I can play around with the photo mode and keep rotating the camera and keep looking at things and keep zooming in where, where it doesn't belong. I love the fact that it keeps you on your toes and there's a darkness and seriousness about it and the game doesn't specifically tell you how to feel well which is something that I respect. I really don't like it when games tell you this is good, this is bad. Like sometimes it's obvious, you know, if you're playing a Mario game, yeah, Bowser's the bad guy. You, <laughs> We don't need new ones, it's okay to have bad guys. But when it's a more in-depth sort of uh, experience, like, you know, we're talking about the, I don't know, the health of the planet, I guess you can say, uh, figuring out what's going on, and there's good and bad in this tribes, and you pick which tribe you want to go with. And the game makes a point to not point out, even if a tribe is bad, they're still not going to say it. They're going to tell you, hey, what will you do? And of course, it will reward you in a different way if you want to be good or bad, which is another subsystem. There's actually heaps of subsystems. There's probably other subsystems I haven't mentioned. But if you keep doing good things, you get a good light, and that gives you access to special good abilities, literally. But if you're bad, if you make bad, evil choices, and you do that enough, eventually it lets you unlock um, special abilities that was not available to you otherwise so long story short i just think it's a fantastic little cycle where every ounce of the game every inch of the game has the fact that it's an open world game in mind and it's like how can we feed on this how can we loop how can we do it and it's done well the melee is done very satisfying everything hits it's easy to focus it has a beautiful depth of field while you're in the middle of combat you can edit that the moves unlock based on your playstyle there is a lot of options you can really get into it nothing's falling through the ground for no reason you're not having weird texture poppins you're not having any weird bugs everything works as intended and how much you get out of biomutant is actually directly correlated to how much you want to put into the game and i think that is an area which explains why the reviewers in my opinion weren't as positive towards this game as i feel they should have been is because reviewers one frankly a lot of modern journalists just don't really care about gaming and see it sees it as a job unfortunately and biomutant is designed by nature and you can tell that you are meant to take your time that you want to enjoy the world and the environment and the law and to just get lost for hours and hours going up a random hill for no reason collecting different items that you can use recycle upgrade build from scratch put everything together the game is designed towards giving as much value towards the gamer as possible and of course this means it is the worst enemy to reviewers that just want to get through it as quickly as possible so then they can do the review and of course that also means that even if they like the game their experience is going to be very different to yours and mine because we will get the game we will want to play it a lot but of course we will try to stretch that out we don't want to be done with the game in a day in a week ideally if we can be playing the same game for a whole month or several months as we enjoy it as we take our time that's wonderful but of course that experience is going to be very different to reviewers that just want to get through it as quickly as possible especially reviewers which as i've mentioned before aren't really gamers now i'm not saying just in case you're new to this channel i'm not saying that anyone who dislikes biomutant is not an actual gamer i'm just saying in general in the society that we live in because gaming is the most successful medium world at the moment 
Uh, it's attracted a lot of talent, a lot of job opportunities, and it's attracted a lot of people who were using the gaming sphere as a stepping stone. And so there's people who were then forced to play video games. And if you're not really a gamer, if you're not there to take your time to enjoy it, and it's nothing more than a job to play a game style that you're not really interested in to begin with, then it's obviously going to impact the review. But for those of you who like open world games, and want to get lost, and want to take your time, and want to perv on the graphics, and want to enjoy the many different game styles, and just enjoy everything as it comes together or perfectly, then yeah, I highly recommend Biomutant um, in that case. Now I'm going to wrap things up here. If you have lasted this long, be sure to subscribe. That's telling the YouTube algorithm, hey, this is worth watching, this is worth promoting. And um, also let me know in the comment section if you've lasted this long, would you like to see this as a series going forward? So as today's video was called Biomutant Analysis, what made it great? I figured the template for that is that this can be this can apply to any game or game or series, and then we can deep dive it in a way which normally a typical reviewer doesn't have the opportunity to do. So for example, if we did a Resident Evil analysis on the series as a whole, or maybe Resident Evil 2 since that's my favorite one, I will talk about intricate details that reviewers don't have time to talk about. Like the fact that pacing is done so well in those old Resident Evil games. Well, when you shoot, instead of with the handgun going really quickly, gain away the tension, the smart, brilliant design that every time you shoot, there is a forced pause, and then you can shoot, and that that completely changed the gameplay and was something new in the gaming industry, industry we hadn't seen before, where you couldn't just resolve your issues by quickly hitting the shoot button, where even if you had the ammunition, you had to take into consideration the distance between you and the zombies and so forth. So if you like that sort of extra deep dive if you like the idea of me doing a series around this and just having a lot of fun going through all these different games but you just really want to nerd it out the way we did with Biomutant then please subscribe to the video like the video and let me know down below our future analysis however you would like to see all right with that being said god bless you all take care i'll see you all for the next one bye bye